Python is considered to be by many the easiest programming language to learn. However, for a beginner, the setup process can be quite tedious. So in this tutorial, I'm going to be showing you everything you need to know to start writing Python and get your first Hello World script out there. I'm Torin Leonard. I'm the co-founder and CEO of This Cozy Studio. I'm also a Python developer slash web developer, and this is the first video in a series of Python tutorials that I have planned. I really hope you enjoy. Let me know what you think in the comments below, and let's get started. Let's head on over to our favorite web browser of choice. And the first thing we're gonna do is type in python.org. This will take us to the main Python site. Let's click downloads and click download Python 3.10.4. Your version might be a bit different, but the setup steps will be almost identical. We'll click download. You'll see a little python.exe file downloading right here. When that's finished, we'll just give that a double click this will open up the Python installer. Let me just walk you through this really quickly. We're gonna check this add Python 3.10 to path. Don't worry about what this means. This is like a super advanced Python thing. For now, let's just go ahead and install. We'll wait for this to finish. And after this has successfully installed, we'll see this setup was successful message here. Uh, if you got a different message, I would suggest going back and re-downloading the python.exe file. For now, let's close this window here and we'll open up a new tab. What we're gonna be downloading next is called PyCharm. Now, PyCharm is an integrated developer environment. Now, to simplify that, it basically just means it's a really easy to use text editor that allows us to write Python code. So let's go ahead and click on the first link here and then click download. Now we're gonna be downloading the community version. This is a free and open source version of PyCharm. Don't worry about the professional version. It just has some fancy features they wanna sell you. So we're just gonna be using community. So let's click download and it'll start downloading just as Py Python was downloaded, uh, this pycharm.exe file here. And after that's finished downloading, we can double click it and it'll open up the PyCharm installation window. So let's click next. We're gonna leave this destination folder directory the same. Click next again. We're gonna create a desktop shortcut by clicking this checkbox right here. That's all we really have to do. Don't worry about any of these other features. We'll click next again, and we're gonna leave this the same. So just click install. Now this is gonna take a little while, so you gotta be patient. After this is complete, let's click the run PyCharm community edition checkbox and click finish. This will boot up PyCharm and now we can get started. So let's click new project. This will create a new Python project for us. Let's call this hello world. And we're gonna ignore everything else here. It'll set up a virtual environment for us. A virtual environment is just a isolated environment for your code to run in. Now we're not gonna really be using this very much in this tutorial because we're just writing a simple hello world script. So we don't have to worry about configuring this that much. We'll just leave the default values here. Let's click create. And this will open up PyCharm and create a new project for us. So we can see here, we already have a Python file open. We're gonna ignore this for now and just delete that. It's just some simple tutorial code that PyCharm places there automatically. If we go over here, we can see the file view for our current project. We have this external libraries folder. You don't have to worry about that. This is actually the Python interpreter that will run whenever you execute Python code. We're not gonna be messing around with that. Up here, we have the vnv. So this is a virtual environment and this will have everything that your code requires to run. I'll explain a bit more about what this means in a future tutorial, but right now we're just gonna ignore that. The biggest thing that we have to pay attention to is our main.py file. Now, if you don't have main.py open for some reason, you can go to the hello world dot folder here, right click on that, hover over new, and then click Python file, and just type in main one dot pi or main dot pi, and it will create the exact same thing. So I'm gonna delete this for now, and just click okay, awesome. And in main.py, let's go ahead and get started. So let's go ahead and create our hello world script. To do this, we're gonna be using a print statement. So let's type out print and add some parentheses. And we can see that print actually appears there when we type it out. So we can actually just hit enter and it will autofill the parentheses for us. Now in a print statement, we need to define a variable. In this case, we're gonna define a string. So strings are represented with quotation marks. 
and inside that string we're gonna type whatever we want to appear in the console. So in this case we're gonna type in hello world an exclamation point and this should run. So let's run this here with this little green play button. So we can see that this Python terminal pops up down here and the string that we typed in up here appears in the Python terminal and it says hello world. That's awesome. Now let's do something a bit crazy and print hello world 100 times. Now you might be tempted to think that we should just copy and paste this like so 100 times, but there's actually an easier way that we can do this with something called a for loop. Now a for loop is a statement in Python that allows you to iterate over a variable. Now it's easier for you to understand if I just show you, so let's create a for loop now. So it's really simple, we just have to type out for. Now we're gonna create a variable called i that we're gonna to use to iterate over a list of numbers in a range of 100. And we're gonna close this for loop statement with a colon. Now this range statement right here just tells Python to create a list of integers out of 100. And then for each integer in that list, we're gonna execute this code right here. So that should mean that we're gonna execute this code 100 times. Let's go ahead and run this code one more time and see the result. So as you can see down here, we got an indentation error. Now the cool thing about these exceptions is it tells you exactly where your code failed. So you can go and debug it pretty easily. We can see the file at which it failed up here and it'll tell us within the project where it failed as well. It'll also tell us the exact line that the code failed. And we can see here that it failed directly on that print statement. And if we look closely, PyCharm actually highlights this issue for us. So if we hover over that, it'll tell us exactly what error Python threw at us. So it says there's an indentation expected and it'll give us a little explanation of what we should do. But in short, all we have to do is add a tab. So that's four spaces or the tab button on your keyboard. Now indentation in Python is extremely important. It basically tells Python what code you want to execute inside a statement like a for loop. Now this also applies to other statements like if else and l if. We'll talk about those in a future tutorial, but right now just understand that spacing is used to define what happens inside these statements right here. So now that we have that all sorted out, we can run this code once more and we should see a different result. If we do that, we see, yes, Hello World does print a hundred times. So if we scroll up here, I'm not gonna count them all, that would take too long, um, but you can guarantee that Hello World is printed in the terminal here 100 times. Awesome. All right, I hope you guys enjoyed that video. There are gonna be more Python tutorials coming soon, as well as some updates on Blend My NFTs and our new Cozy API service that we're gonna be launching soon. So stay tuned for that. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.